What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I've done a lot of talking head videos where I just kind of talk to you and give you information to try and arm you with, making you better PC builders and buy the right stuff for your builds. Because let's face it, everyone has different needs. And one of the videos I did, I think it was last year, maybe even the year before, was I talked about fans and the difference between pull, push, and push-pull, and where you would want to use the various configs with fans. And one of the biggest pieces of feedback I've gotten was, it would have been nice to see actual comparisons and you know, see it in action so you guys can actually tell what the difference is and not just talk about it. So that's what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about radiators, we're gonna talk about push-pull, and we're gonna actually do some comparisons here where we see how much of a difference there really is. Need a new X99 motherboard for your ultimate build? Well, good news because ASRock has two new motherboards guaranteed to meet your needs. With key features like 12-phase power delivery, three steel PCI Express slots, triple M.2 sockets, and even a dedicated water pump header, make the new X99 Tai Chi and Fatality X99 Professional Gaming i7 obvious choices for your next extreme build. Learn more about ASRock's line of X99 motherboards by clicking the link down below. Now what I have right here are two different 120 millimeter fans. Both of them have a 120 millimeter surface area, which is you know 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters, and they have a 120 millimeter fan that fits on them. That's how they get their name. But the difference between both of these is their thickness. This is a 30 millimeter radiator. This is a 45 millimeter radiator, which means this has 50% extra thickness to it which theoretically leads to it having more overall surface area in the fin density, giving it a better cooling advantage to its skinnier counterpart. So that's where fans come in, where if you use a thick radiator, but you don't have proper fan config on it, you could actually be doing yourself a disservice and actually getting worse temperatures than going with a thinner radiator if you're not moving air across those fins efficiently. The thicker the radiator is, the more pressure drop there's going to be on one side versus the other. As the air is going in, it's gonna meet resistance with all these fans because air actually kinda of wants to expand and go sideways. And as it's forced straight through these fins, it's going to lose pressure over distance. So that's why high static pressure fans actually are recommended when it comes to radiators. And that's why a push-pull configuration is recommended on anything 45 millimeter or thick, in my opinion. You'll find varying opinions out there on the internet. It's kinda of funny how that works. There's, there's lots of facts and there's lots of opinions and a complete disregard for which one's which, but I digress. Um, some would say a 60 millimeter or even an 80 millimeter would be where you would need to use push-pull, not necessarily a 45. It's also gonna matter on the fin density, how small the fins are, how big the fins are. Um, there's lots of factors there, and I did a video on that as well that you could check out, which will go more in depth on that. I'm not gonna bore you here today with that kind of information. We're just gonna kind of keep it high level and simple for the sake of uh, apples to apples comparison here. Uh, but as, they, as the air is pushed through the fins and forced to straighten out, it's going to encounter a lot of resistance, which means that the pressure going in on one side may not equal the pressure on the other side. And the goal here with radiators is to try and get equal air in, air out on both sides of the radiator, limiting the amount of pressure drop which would also limit the amount of cooling efficiency that you can have. The way a radiator works is as water is flowing through the cooling tubes and the heat is being dissipated through those fins, the fan's job is to move that heat away from the radiator so that more heat can be absorbed. So the more efficient you get the air across that radiator, the better your radiator is gonna work. Now, yes, guys, I know there's obviously more to it than that. There's also not only the thickness of the radiator, there is the overall surface area of the radiator, which means if you were to take a 120 and add another 120 to it, making it a 240, even though it's thinner, it will have usually better cooling uh, efficiencies than going with a radiator that's half as long but twice as thick. So there's there's a lot of testing we can do here and lots of material that we can do in the future, but I wanna keep this video a manageable length. So today we are gonna focus on an all-in-one cooling loop that is built into my 1080 hybrid card because I showed in that video that I was able to improve the temperatures quite a bit by getting rid of the fan that it comes with and going with a high static pressure fan in a push-pull configuration. So today we're gonna to test three things. We're gonna test push, and we're gonna test pull, and then we're gonna do a push-pull with my Vardar 1850 RPM fans, which are a high static pressure fan designed specifically for water cooling and radiators. We're also gonna try it at a bunch of different RPMs to see how much difference there really is. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some predictions here now. I don't predict that push or pull is gonna to be too different at the same RPM, but I do predict that push-pull will allow us to get better cooling at lower RPMs 
uh, and even better cooling at higher RPMs. The nice thing about push-pull is it doesn't mean you have to run the fans higher. It means you can actually get away with lower RPMs and not have to deal with nearly as much pressure drop across the radiator. All right, so that's enough talking head shit. Let's go ahead and turn around, get into the test bench, and let's start, let's start playing around and testing this. Transition. Now what you guys are looking at right now is two identical EK Waterblock Vardar 2200 RPM fans hooked up on a PWM splitter on the same PWM circuit. So they are getting identical voltages here when it comes to fan RPMs and performance. Now the one on the left obviously is hooked up to a high density 30 millimeter thick uh, 120 millimeter radiator. And the one on the right clearly is in an open air config that has no resistance either in front or behind the fan. So the reason why I'm showing you this uh, is to kind of give you a visual aid as we increase RPMs to see what happens in pull, push, and push-pull config so that you can visually see what's happening here. Then at the end of all of this, what I'm going to do is off camera, I'll do all the temperature testing, I'll put together a chart. That way, I mean, there's really no way to en entertain you while I check the temperatures. I mean, that would be really boring. But anyway, right now they are running at 1,000... 15 RPM of their max 2200. So they're less than 50% right now. This is at their starting voltage. This is as slow as they can spin. So this, as you can see, we're getting like hardly any airflow through the radiator whatsoever right now. And the um, open air, as you can see, is actually moving the paper. Now the paper does have a little bend at the end of it so that it doesn't just flop around and start waving. We want to get something for the air to catch and push. That way we can actually measure how much static pressure and airflow is making it through the fan blade and resistance itself. So as you can see at starting voltages, there's quite a bit of difference between the two already. Um, but that should be fairly obvious. Let's go ahead and kick up the RPM a little bit. Let's go to about 1600 RPM and let's see if there's any difference. So as you can see at 1600, actually 1591 RPM, I digress, uh, there is quite a bit of difference between the two. You can see the fan on the, op the paper on the open air fan is completely extended. And uh, that is just, I, I can feel, I'm standing quite a ways from these fans right now and I can actually feel the airflow from the fan on the right. Um, and as you can see, the paper, it's no match for the fan. It can lift it no problem. So let's go ahead and see what happens here if we max out the RPMs and see what happens. All right, well, there they are at 100% uh, fan speed. As you can see, the fan on the right, obviously, is just like no problems. It's even bending the paper. The, there's so much air hitting the end of that little tab that it's actually folding the paper up in the middle. But the radiator fan, as you can see, seems to be struggling. Now, it's kind of interesting here. What I'm noticing through the radiator fan is there seems to be a bit of a vortex taking place here. And I wish I had smoke or something that I could show you. Uh, I might have to invest in a fog machine and build a fan testing station to actually show you this. Because what's happening here is the air actually seems to be kind of swirling around. So it's being kind of almost pushed on by on both sides. And let me show you what I mean by that. If I lift up the, the paper, it's actually being sucked back down. Now, you physicists or whoever that follow me might be able to explain what's happening there. The only thing I can think is it might have something to do with the Venturi effect that's happening as the air is coming through the radiator and being forced to straighten out and then suddenly reaching the atmosphere and allowing to swirl and do what it wants to do. Where the fan on the right is just kind of allowed to do its own thing. There's no influence on the airflow. The radiator is actually creating almost a bit of a suction effect where that's just where it goes. If I lift it up, it falls back down. If I push it down, it pushes back up. So I can't actually explain that one. Now, people might say the other fan on the right is actually influencing it. It's not. Uh, I've already tested this. There's, if I was to put something in between them, there would be no difference whatsoever on the airflow. In fact, I'll even point it away. So as you can see, there's no difference whatsoever when I do that. But yeah, when I lift it up, it sucks back down. But when I push it down, it pushes back out. So I don't know what's happening there, but there seems to be a little bit of an influence happening right there. Can't quite explain it. You guys tell me. All right, let's go ahead and move to push config. All right, so same test. This is a push config. Right now they are running at 1000 RPM. As you can see, obviously open air is winning, but that should be no surprise. But what we wanna see here is now in a push config, are we gonna get that weird Venturi slash suction effect? Uh, I am inclined to say no but uh, let's go ahead and bump up the RPM. All right, so here we are at 1630 RPM. That's 75% on the voltage there. And as you can see, obviously the fan on the right, completely unrestricted, no change, same test. Uh, but push there, we seem to be pushing the paper out a little bit now. It doesn't really seem to be having that kind of a weird effect like you guys saw before. 
So let's go ahead and bump it up to 100 and see if it pushes it out now rather than sucking it back down. Okay, so same thing as before. Again, guys, these fans, I promise, are not affecting each other here. I can put my hand right there. As you can see, there is absolutely no change whatsoever to that. So the fan on the side is not influencing the radiator fan whatsoever. But as you can see now, we are getting a pretty decent um, airflow there through the radiator. It's no longer got that weird kind of a Venturi effect going there. So I, th I think something can be said for the, re the interference of the airflow in a pull config versus push. I've never actually tested this, so this is news to me. I wonder if anyone's experienced this before. Um, but anyway, one last test. Let's go ahead and go over to push pull, and then let's talk temperatures. So there's what 1,000 RPM looks like. Let's go ahead and bump it up to 1,600. As the fans are ramping up, let's see if you can see it push out. It's at 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, and 1,600. So you can see there's definitely a little bit of improved airflow there, obviously, as we're expecting, because we've got two fans working to overcome that pressure differential. And now they're speeding up to 100%. So let's see what happens here. It's kind of funny. Even with two of these guys running at 100%, they still do not seem to create nearly as much static pressure, obviously, as these fans perform in an open environment. So yeah, it's kind of kind of interesting there if you think about it. I mean, all fans are obviously tested in their most ideal condition, which is completely open. So you need to keep in mind when you shop for your fans, uh, their ratings when it comes to static pressure, because you can have amazing airflow, but it doesn't mean it can overcome the static pressure. Yeah, guys, I know I'm running airflow fans on my 560 Rad on Skunk Works. I'm probably gonna be changing that on my update. So give me a break. All right, let's do some temperature testing. Transition. Now the results here are actually a little bit different than what I was expecting. I actually expected pull to perform a little better than push. You often hear there can be a couple of degrees difference between the two, which is very true, and as my, you know, my charts here have shown, but I was of the belief personally that pull would be slightly better because it has no choice but to pull air through the radiator, which I guess just seemed to make sense, but if you, if you look at the chart here, you can see that push actually performed a little bit better than pull, except at max RPMs where pull did a little bit better than push by a couple of degrees. In fact, push did 49 degrees Celsius max temp uh, at max RPMs, but pull did 47. But if you take a look at push, it did better in every other RPM range than max RPM. So what I think might've been happening here, because when I saw that result, I did a little bit of checking, a little bit of testing here, was I felt a lot of air kind of pushing back against the intake of the fan, if that makes sense, when it's in push config. What I think might be happening here is when you have a high fin density radiator and you have a high static pressure, high RPM fan, there could be a point where you can actually uh, get a bit of splash or even back pressure because the air can't make it through the fins fast enough. So it's got to find a way of, of uh, least resistance, which is going to be any of the cracks around the edge of the radiator where the fan meets and it doesn't, you know, actually touch flush or have any sort of foam protecting air from coming out the sides. Because um, I felt some air actually coming back out the fan where it should be coming in. So there was a little bit of what appeared to be a little bit of splash and air coming out the sides. So not all of the air was actually going through the radiator. Where in a pull config, it was able to actually pull every single ounce of CFM through the radiator, which gave us a little bit better performance. But once you slowed the RPMs down, that was no longer the case. Push was then the better performer at the 1600 RPM and 1000 RPM uh, speeds. So what I think might've been happening here, like I said, is a little bit of back pressure building up. Now, obviously push pull was the winner all around. 41 degrees Celsius at 2200 RPM, overclocked, plus 100% on the voltage, 2164 uh, megahertz on the, on the GPU, plus 500 on the RAM. I mean, I really pushed the graphics card as hard as I could to try and build up heat. But this is the first time I've actually shown you guys uh, tangible results so you can see by just how much. 
Anyway, if you guys are looking at doing fan configs on your radiators, if you can fit it, push-pull is going to be the best result. Even at lower RPMs, as you can see, we were getting lower temps at lower RPMs than push or pull uh, independently. So if you have the room for it, do push-pull. But if you don't, then obviously make sure you have a good static pressure fan and temperatures will still be just fine. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching here. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. We'll do more science stuff. Remember, this, these videos are directly in response to requests from you guys. So make sure you let me know what you want me to do. And uh, if it makes sense, then we'll do it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.